Hey folks, Nick Corbertson here with another audio kit tutorial for you, and today we're talking about AUV3 support. AUV3 stands for Audio Unit Version 3. What it allows us to do is to make our application have an AUV3 extension, and then you can use our app's instrument inside of AUV3 host applications like GarageBand, Cubasis, and others. It is kind of tricky. I'm not going to lie, like I had some difficulty figuring it out. Fortunately on AudioKit's GitHub there's a great example of how to support AUV3, but currently it only shows how to do it with AudioKit 4. So I'm going to show you how to get started doing that with AudioKit 5, and also our example is going to be teeny tiny. We're just going to load an instrument and just have one effect and have that load inside of GarageBand for us. That's the host application I chose to use. And uh, yeah, after this video is done, you will know from start to finish how to make your instrument app. I, it has all the key features now in the previous videos. So far, we've gone over creating an instrument in GarageBand or Logic. Then we have taken that instrument and created an application for it using the cookbook as an example for AudioKit. Then we added effects with it. We had MIDI support. And finally today, we are tackling the AUV3 support. This one is gonna be, a, it's gonna be a little tricky, but by the end, it'll, it'll, you know, it'll, 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 let's get started. <laughs> to follow along, you can download this final AUV3 instrument project from the GitHub link in the description. I'll go over all the AUV3 stuff in a minute, but first I want to show you the process I took in creating this project, as it'll show you some useful steps in creating your own application with AudioKit 5. For the first part of this tutorial, things move quickly because a lot of it's review from the other videos and everything I'm covering is included in the GitHub project. So pencils down as I take you on the journey of a lifetime. Also big shout out to the AudioKit AUV3 example that supports AudioKit version 4. Much of the implementation I'm using is adapted from that project and it continues to be a valuable resource for working with AUV3 in AudioKit. Now it's time to make the donuts. To get started with our project, I'm going to download the AudioKit cookbook for the bajillionth time and create a new Xcode project titled Instrument that is using Swift and Swift UI. Next, there are some files we're going to grab from the cookbook to include in our project. Since the Instrument EXS example uses a parameter slider and a keyboard controller, I'll drag those Swift files over to our project. Make sure the copy checkbox is checked to add the files to your bundle. The other file we'll need is the Instrument EXS file, which we've seen in earlier videos from this series. Next, we'll add the AudioKit and AudioKit UI Swift packages to the application. You can do this by entering the URL or searching for AudioKit if you've added it previously. In the instrument app file, I'll change the default view to our instrument EXS view. And for the final piece from the cookbook, I'll copy over the init method that includes the audio session code from the cookbook app Swift file. Next, I'll edit our instrument EXS script to add the MIDI listener and reverb effect, but since you've seen all this before, I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead. In addition to those changes, I've updated the file path to a new square instrument, but I still need to make that EXS instrument inside of Logic. So I'm going to drag an empty folder called Sounds to our project's main bundle, and I'll add a square wave. I'll create a new Logic project and drag over our square wave file from our Sounds folder to create a new sampler instrument. Just as before, I'll make the sounds looping and remove the crossfades, and once it's all ready, I'll save the file to our sounds folder. So now inside of the folder in our project, we have our audio file and our EXS instrument. The final piece of configuration we need to add is our background audio capabilities to our Xcode project. This allows your audio to still play when the screen goes dark, like whenever you're playing with a MIDI controller. Now we're ready to run our application. In the simulator, this should look very familiar if you've seen the cookbook's instrument EXS example. We have a built-in keyboard view and a simple reverb effect. At this point, we have a complete app prototype, but now we want to add our audio unit extension so that we can use our instrument in GarageBand. So I'll go up to File, New Target, and select Audio Unit Extension. First, you'll have to fill out this form. We'll be using Swift, the audio type is an instrument, and your subtype code and manufacturing code both need to be four characters or else it won't work. When you're building your own app later on, you can edit these files from the AUV3's info.plist file. We'll select Finish, then activate, and now we have our AUV3 files added to our project. The first thing we'll do is we'll link up our AudioKit framework to our AUV3 target under Build Phases, Link Binary with Library. Then we'll add the scripts and resources from our project that we need to include in our AUV3 target. Next, I'm going to create a separate conductor class for our AudioKit audio engine. Right now, it's already included in the instrument EXS code, but that class has a keyboard delegate and MIDI listener events that we don't need when we're loading our app as an audio unit extension. All right, 
I've teleported to the future where now we have our conductor class that is controlling our audio from both the app and our audio unit extension. Now let's turn our attention to the AUV3 and there are really only three files we'll need to edit. We have our main interface storyboard for our user interface, the corresponding audio unit view controller where we link up our user interface with the audio unit itself, and finally our audio unit Swift file. You'll notice that this is blank by default. There are a lot of extra files that get imported. I don't know what they all do and I don't touch them and I don't think you should touch them either. Huh? So when we chose Swift before, it created the Swift audio unit and parameter files, but it's up to us to override those methods, which will occur in another quantum leap coming up shortly. But before that, let's build our interface. You could use a UI hosting controller in your view controller class to link up your Swift UI interface, but I think it's just easier to keep everything synced up if you just create a separate AUV3 specific interface. I'm gonna add in a reverb slider and a couple of labels and link everything up. You could also add these elements programmatically if you prefer. I know there are many professional development companies that never really touch Interface Builder, but I rather enjoy using it. Now we have everything linked up and I've added code to have our view controller send and receive changes to our audio unit and our audio unit to send and receive changes to the interface and audio engine. This would be a good time for some doodling. So we have our application that has our standalone app stuff and our audio unit extension. The extension is passing data to and from the same conductor class as our app and the audio unit is sending and receiving data from our view controller. Additionally, the host application can access the audio unit's AU parameter tree and presets, which are all linked together in this array of organized chaos. The final class we'll look at is our instrument AUV3 audio unit. And again, you can see this entire project from the Git repository link below. I won't go into too fine a detail of things because it might be changing over time, but I'll cover some of the high points. This class is largely adapted from AudioKit's own AUV3 example application. We initialize our conductor and connect the underlying AV audio engine instance. This was the magical line of code that just made everything work. Here we are overriding our Objective-C init method for our audio unit. And as I scroll my way down this file, you'll see where we implement our presets and AU parameters. In this example, you can see where changing AU param1 will set our reverb's dry wet mix. And finally, we handle our MIDI events from the host application to play and control our instrument. All right, now it's showtime. When we run our application now, everything should work just like it did before. But now we have the option of running our audio unit extension target in an AUV3 host application. For this example, I'm using GarageBand, but there are several AUV3 host applications on the App Store to choose from. So I'll go ahead and build our project inside of GarageBand, but then it's up to us to add that audio unit to our project. Now inside of GarageBand, I'll add a new audio unit extension instrument and select our audio unit with the default orange icon. Now we have our instrument playing inside of GarageBand. If you click the little knob up here in the top right hand corner, you'll see our audio units view inside of GarageBand. The slider controls an AU parameter that is synced across the view controller, the audio unit, the conductor, and the host application. It's a little bit complicated in terms of logic, but it makes total sense from a usability standpoint. If the user changes the reverb value, they would expect it to change the amount of reverb on the instrument, as well as updating the value on the slider in the view and the host application. We can play and record our audio unit in GarageBand now, just like any other MIDI instrument. Congrats, folks. You made it to the end. I know this stuff is kind of confusing and that's the hardest part is just wrapping your brain around all the AUV3 stuff. But hopefully this video and example application powered by AudioKit will be a giant leap forward for you in making your own instrument application. And that's it. Now you know how to make an app start to finish using AudioKit. Now there are some little, little things here and there that you'll pick up, but these are all the high points. We have covered all the high points and you are ready to become a rock star, or at least the person who makes an app that a rock star could use. Yeah, which is equally as cool. Anyways, thanks for watching these videos, folks. I hope it's been helpful in your journey to become an audio kit master. Now you're ready to head out there and start making your own app. Time to put on your big boy pants or big girl pants, whichever kind of pants you want to wear, but make sure you're wearing pants. Be sure to like and subscribe and let me know in the comments what kind of apps you're working on. Uh, next videos that come out, I'm going to be working on a secret project. I really Is don't want to talk about it. Are you going to make a synth app? Are you talking about Shut synth up. app right now? Sorry. But yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. So make sure you stay tuned to the channel for that. And otherwise, thank you to AudioKit for making music app development a little bit easier for all of us. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.
Oh yeah! We did it! We freaking did it, man!